Hi, my name is Hannah Sharma, and I'm an undergrad geoscience major at the University of Texas at Dallas. Today, we'll be talking about the RSL LED smelter and the history of LED smelting in West Dallas. Imagine looking out your window and seeing smoke rising from a large chimney just a couple blocks away. This chimney is part of a large LED smelter plant. While we knew how dangerous lead was when the smelter first started in the mid-1930s, the full effects would be known until close to 1984. Many playgrounds, schools, and public housing nearby, used by many people, went away slaying yards in the smelt industries in the air. For the people of West Dallas, this was the reality up to 1984. West Dallas is located across the Trinity River from downtown Dallas, and for much of the 20th century was centered around industry and manufacturing. After being annexed by the city, public policy was focused on segregating African Americans and Hispanic Americans from the rest of the city. One feature that used to be prominent in West Dallas was the RSR lead smelter plant, a lead battery recycling plant which operated in the neighborhood from the mid-1930s to 1984. The smelter sat a few blocks away from public housing projects, residential neighborhoods, and next door to the West Dallas Boys and Girls Club. Over the years, lead would contaminate the surrounding soil and have adverse effects on residents' health. But why is lead so dangerous? Lead accumulates in the body, and since the body has no ability to purge it, it affects upon functions, such as the central nervous system and internal organs. At high levels of exposure, it can cause coma, convulsions, and even death. Other possible ailments include kidney disease, cancer, diabetes, and heart problems. These dangers from lead do not appear for many years until health problems show up, which, at that point, the effects are irreversible. The RSR smelter used smokestacks to smell smelter exhaust into the air. As peak of operation, the plant spewed as much as 260 tons of lead per year. Residents who opened their windows to seek relief from the hot Texas summer were breathing lead in their own homes. Research at that time showed that the minimum threshold for the lead danger was 501,000 parts per million. Throughout the area, this level was routinely exceeded. For example, a 1983 EPA report of soil lead found within one mile radius of the plant said the levels reached as high as 25,000 parts per million. Additionally, Lead smelting also emitted other hazardous materials, such as cadmium and arsenic. West Dallas residents knew for a long time that the smelter had adverse effects on their health. A hearing held by the City of Dallas against the RSR Corporation found that the plant was operating without proper pruning for at least nine years. As part of a settlement by a later lawsuit, the company was required to pay for the remediation of the residential land within a half mile radius of the former plant. Lead containment soil was dug up and replaced with clean fill. Concerns after the completion of the claim still persisted, however. A screen of children's blood samples in 1984 found blood levels to be higher than a similar screen done in 1981, which was higher than when the plant was in operation. A large part of the effort to more thoroughly clean up in West Dallas was a result of efforts by local activists and organizations. The West Dallas Coalition for Environmental Justice kept up their own soil testing and protested Dallas City Council meetings. Soon, their efforts attracted the attention of the EPA, and the former site was organized as a super fun site in 1993. The smelter has since been destroyed and replaced an empty lot that eventually developed into a 7 Eleven. While the EPA claimed the cleanup as successfully finished in 1995, lead chips still improved residents' yards years afterwards, and health concerns didn't exactly go away. Thanks for watching. More sources about the RSR lead smaller will be in the description down below. Hope you have a wonderful day.